If you didn't hear the news, the release date for D&D Beyond has been confirmed as August 15th, which is in a couple of weeks now. Um, we've obviously had phases 1, 2, and 3 of the base testing, so most of you guys by this point, I will assume, have checked out D&D Beyond in some capacity. But if you haven't, um, then I've done some other videos on that in the past. Um, but the real question has been, as throughout the lifespan of when D&D Beyond was conceived and we first started talking about it onto launch day and throughout it, how much is it going to cost? Uh, and not only how much is it going to cost, but um, what are the options available for those those pricings? And they've released the pricing information, which is really the number one thing that I've been saying uh, that I've been like concerned about or worried about or interested in hearing more about. Uh, because I think the product itself uh, is a, a good one. I want it to succeed. I think that the website itself in general is a good one um, but I think the 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 price that where they pitch it, it was always going to be the real tell of whether people are going to use it or not because I think the tools are good but people aren't going to use things that they have to pay lots of money for that they don't think they should necessarily have to pay lots of money for. So let's go into the pricing information real quick and talk a little bit about that. Uh, so first thing to make clear, as has been some confusion, is that there are two separate ways of purchasing uh, content. Um, well, I should say, so there's one way of purchasing content, which is like straight up payment, and then there are subscriptions, which are on the other side of the thing, which aren't content as such, they're more, more tools which become available to you. Um, so the subscriptions don't give you any digital content, and the content doesn't give you any more tools, basically. Um, and it's, and it's, I, I did a tweet about this the other day, but the SRD content is all free. Um, but here we go. So at launch, you'll be able to buy uh, the Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and Monster Manual for uh, $20. However, after launch day, digital source books like the PHB and Volo's Guide will be $30 to pay for. Uh, straight up, you just pay $30 um, and then you have them. Uh, while adventure modules like Curse of Stride, Storm King's Thunder will be $25. Now, it's important to note that whilst you can get this digital content for that money, it has been confirmed by the devs that they will not be a PDF. It's not like a hyperlinked PDF that you're getting. You're getting access to it on the uh, the D&D Beyond database, which currently is online only. In the future, they plan to have offline uh, capabilities as well, but currently we don't have that, so we can't judge it on that. Um, so... Is buying a PHB or Volo's Guide to Monsters on a digital database worth $30 to someone like myself? The answer for that I find is no. Um, I, I will not be paying $30 for a PHB or Volo's Guide to Monster if I'm just an average chap on the block, right? Uh, who already has a PHB. And here's the thing with the PHBs. And I know that you're not getting the same thing because you have a physical copy and, and this digital content is cheaper. But here's the thing, I have to imagine, and this is something that I've been talking, uh, well I saw on Twitter in conversations with Angry GM about, is that for 5th edition, most of the players' handbooks have already been bought, that are going to be bought. When RPG games release at launch is when they make their most sales, and their most sales come from their cool rulebooks, which is the PHB. Uh, based on like Amazon sales that you can look up, you can see that the PHB is the number one seller. Um, so that's, that's pretty much clear. And it seems to me that whilst we have a whole ton of new people playing D&D and getting into it, uh, the vast majority of PHBs have already been sold, which means that for the vast majority of people, you're buying a PHB again. Um, now, I know that they're not the same thing. Like, I get that one PHB is physical and one is digital, but let's be honest with ourselves, it is bullshit. Buying something twice, which is essentially the same product, uh, you know, there's no new content within this digital PHB that I can't get in my physical PHB, right? Um, sure, there's ease of access, there's, you know, be able to have it on my phone and take it around and eventually be offline capability. Um, sure, that's one thing, but essentially, like, I, it feels like bullshit to me, at least. Buying something twice just feels, like, gross. Um, like, if it was any other RPG company trying to sell me the same thing twice, I, I feel like they, they wouldn't be able to get away with it. Here's the other thing. Okay, so there's that. That's that's how I feel about that. I feel like buying something twice is, is kind of shitty. Um, I didn't like it with Roll20, um, but I've bought it twice, and I also get to use Roll20 of a virtual tabletop. Sure, D&D Beyond is said to have future integrations of this, but there's a lot of stuff at D&D Beyond where they said that's coming in the future, and we can't judge it on that currently. 
Um, let's talk about the subscription. Now, subscriptions I actually like, right? I actually like these subs. To a degree, right? So the hero tier, as I describe it, is a free dollar tier intended primarily for players. It removes ads from the site. I don't know if that's a big deal. For, and not for me, usually. Uh, allows players to create an unlimited number of characters, which is the real, the real clincher. And add publicly shared homebrew content to your collection to use within the tool set. Okay. Um, I think the main use that you're going to get from the free dollars, like regular use, is going to be the unlimited number of characters. Um, I think that if you make a lot of characters, you enjoy making characters, you want to have them in an online space that you can share with other people that are using D&D Beyond, that has some value to it. And $3 a month isn't crazy. It's not a crazy amount of money, I don't think. Uh, for most people to put on a subscription, you know, subscriptions on Twitch are $5. I don't know how much Amazon Prime, uh, Prime is, or like $7, $8. You know, so there are subscriptions at an accepted level is about $5, I'd say, for an online subscription to something. I don't know how much Netflix is. Uh, but, you know, th those are some comparisons, I guess. Um, here's the thing, though. If, if that is true, um, and you are just getting, you're basically going to be using this for this, the unlimited number of characters. And maybe you will be using lots of publicly homebrew content in your games. Maybe you will. Uh, maybe you really care about ads on a site. Personally, I don't really give a shit about ads. Because the subscription tier um, is separate from digital content, I can only create unlimited number of characters with SRD content. Now, I think the SRD is fantastic. I think. Um, you know, I, I think it's been it's done great things for the game, really accessible for people. But most people who are going to be using D and D Beyond um, are going to want to be able to use PHP content. So what does this mean? It means that you'll only be able to create characters with a uh, one archetype. You'll only be able to create characters with one background, which is the acolyte. So I can only make champion fighter acolytes. I can't make a um, you know a, 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 an eldritch knight. Uh, sailor uh character right w with this subscription so it basically means that if i want to have unlimited number of characters then i'm very incentivized to buy the player's handbook for 30 dollars okay so it highly incentivizes you to buy the php for 30 dollars which we have established that i feel is bullshit uh you may feel differently that buying the php online is is totally valuable to you and here's the thing if you haven't bought the php already it isn't bullshit, right? Buying something for the first time is like, yeah, sure, I'll buy this PHP, you know, it's all this content, I can have it all in one place. And I've spoken to people who, who say that, um, you know, they haven't got a PHP already and they're thinking, well, if I play online as I do, then I'm just going to buy the PHP online. Um, and that's, you know, super useful to me. Okay, moving on to the second subscription tier, which is where I think you can find some value, is the Master tier at $5.99 a month, so $6 a month, basically. Intended primarily for Dungeon Masters and full groups. It grants all the benefits of the Hero tier, and allows the DM to share all her unlocked official content of other players in a campaign. So content does not have to be unlocked by every player. Um, a couple of people confused this uh, when we first started talking about this on Twitter, uh, that because you pay $6 a month, you actually get that content for free, like the PHP, the DMG, Velo's Guide and stuff like that. Not correct. Uh, it means that when you buy the PHP or the Storm King's Thunder, Curse of Stride, etc., you can share that content with players um, for free. Right, so so there's some value in that. If you have a full, uh, like a long-running group, uh, a committed group that all want to use this online tool, six dollars a month between four or five people becomes very reasonable over the course of a year. You know, you end up basically paying like ten dollars or less, right? Um, I'm sure someone's done the maths on that um, because I refuse to do maths. Uh, so yeah, I mean that that works out quite well. Um, being able to share content for free is good. You know, you can just give your dungeon master a couple of bucks every month or whatever. Uh, it's not. Not particularly um, useful, I think, if you aren't in a dedicated group because, you know, um, I feel like there could be the like the potential problem could come up there where like, oh, I paid you from D&D Beyond and now you kick me out of your game. Uh, you know, so I don't think I'd bother with that. But that's, that's reasonable. But here's the thing, even though you have all that uh, ability, you still have to then make those purchases. So once again, the subscription encourage, highly incentivizes you to buy the content online again, right? So because I have this Dungeon Master tier, well, I can share all of this stuff for free. So, um, but because I have a $6 sub, wait, I can't share anything because I don't have anything bought on this site, right? So now I have to go and buy Volo's Guide to Monsters for there to be something to share. 
right? Um, just buying the $6 a month subscription, sure, I now get unlimited number of characters and no ads, etc. Being able to share public homebrew content. Um, but if I don't actually have any unlocked official content within the website, then it doesn't incentivize me to uh, just, like, just buy the $6. You know, it's like, okay, now I have the master tier, I may as well buy this stuff, uh, because otherwise, why am I paying $6, right? Um, the other thing to note is that uh, you can buy individual game elements or bundled content of any, any official source. They say, if you like to play Barbarians, you can unlock that class and all of the options uh, only. You want to run Tomb of Horrors from Telson Yawning Portal? Unlock that single adventure. Um, I quite like unlocking single adventures, like they did with Raw 20 packs. You could buy them for $8, you could buy the whole thing. I don't know how much it was, like $30, $40, something like that. Um, that makes sense to me, especially on Roll 20 where it gives you all the maps and stuff like that if you just want to play for an adventure. However, like, I don't know how much I like just being able to buy fighters and stuff like that. Uh, maybe it's okay. It depends what the pricing is on that. I, I mean, I don't know what the pricing is, so I can't say. I'd imagine that buying them individually works out much more expensive than just buying the Payers Handbook. So again, you're incentivized to pay the $30 or $20 on sale uh, whilst you're doing this. $2 per magic item, $3 per class. $2 per magic item? Are you kidding me? As okay, Asimar Race costs $3. New information just in half the press from Rankle Plays Games. Asimar Race costs $2.99. Paladin class with all PHP options costs $3.99. Woo! Bad Eye says, example, an Asimar Paladin Dragon Knight with a background and two magic items is worth $12.99. Yeah, that's incredible. Like, that is a little bullshit, isn't it? Is that just me? Would you go Okay, question. Let's poll chat. Would you buy, if you were wanting to play an Asmar Paladin, if for, for whatever reason you really wanted to play this character, let's put us in that mindset for a second, an Asmar Paladin Dragon Knight with a background of two magic items. So you, you haven't bought a PHB, you haven't bought all this stuff because you think it's bullshit. Um, but you think, oh, I'm not going to buy that, I'm just going to buy that. Would you pay $12.99 for a, uh, a race from Volo's Guide, a class of all PHB content, two back, uh, background and two magic items? I mean, that's that's crazy. Is it worth it? I think it really depends on the the, the amount that you're going to use these tools. If you think the tools are worth using, whether or not you've got a full group that is going to use these tools as well. Because even though I have a full group of players, doesn't necessarily mean that they all care about D&D Beyond, right? You basically have to commit to this platform. Uh, and for those of us who have committed to other platforms such as Roll20, like Financially made a commitment to Roll20 with buying content on Roll20, this is buying it for the third time, and I know that yes, they'll be integrated later down the line, etc. Um, but that isn't true yet, you know, that's, that isn't the case right now, so putting my money in, in uh, into the, the hat at the moment doesn't get me that. Yeah, I mean, I, like I say, I think buying something twice is, like, not consumer-friendly whatsoever. It basically is the same thing. Uh, I don't really I don't really care what people say about that. I know that it's digital. The only difference is that this is a book and this is on its database. It's not like I get a PDF. I feel like a PDF I'd be quite happy with, honestly. I would, I would, I would throw money at Wizards out for creating a PDF. I feel like, if it was hyperlinked, even better. Like, they don't have to have to hyperlink it, you know? I'd, I'd quite happily put my money towards that. But seeing as it's on a database, I feel like, on, in general, that probably has less value for people. Um, correct me if I'm wrong if you feel differently on that, of course. It's just, it's, it, you know, like I say, the subs feel okay. The subs feel okay, um, like pitched at a right amount, you know, $3 a month isn't crazy, $6 a month for all this stuff isn't crazy, it's just that they do highly incentivize you to buy the bullshit item, which is the PHB again, or the Dungeon Master's Guide again, or the Monster Manual again. Yeah, I feel in particular those three are the ones that like just leave a bad taste in my mouth. And if we look at, I mean, this poll's been up here or across the course of the streams, so I'm sure you guys have seen this, but this guy asked in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, which has, I don't know how many tens of thousand people in that poll, but will you be buying and subscribing to D&D Beyond? Please explain why. 1.8k uh, said no, 275 said yes. Um, it seems, and from what I've seen around the internet, is that people aren't particularly happy. I think particularly with the uh, repurchasing of content that we already have. Yeah, I feel like um, getting something on Roll20 
um, does have an inherently different value to it than buying something just on a database. Because I, and again, I know that there'll be, you know, they'll be have integration for, for Roll20 soon. We're working with our partners and Fantasy Grounds, etc. That's fucking brilliant. Like, I can't wait to see that. And when that's, when that's the case, I'll judge it on that, right? But being able to buy a pack on Roll20, which I buy at full price, you know, I, I think it's $30, $40, or maybe even more that I buy on Roll20. I don't mind paying for a, a game like Storm King's Thunder on Roll20 because because here's what I get. I get all the maps laid out for me. I get hundreds of tokens laid out for me. I get hundreds of handouts. Roll20 is my primary, primary platform for playing. My players have a good experience. I get a much better visually enhanced experience by doing that. Um, and it's all in one place. Like I just go into the, the search bar and it's there. You know, If you play on Roll20, then I don't feel like D&D Beyond replaces that. People ask me uh, when D&D Beyond came out. Are you going to, you know, replace Roll20's compendium with uh, with D&D Beyond? I thought, oh, I'll give it a try. And I found myself, because I'm in Roll20, whilst I'm playing with my tokens and rolls and stuff like that, there's a little I tab, um, <laughs> one of the character sheets we use, and that I tab is all of the SRD stuff. And if I've bought Volo's Guide to Monsters, that's included in there as well. And if I've included Song King's Final, that's in there as well. So I just search in, I'm looking for a Volo's Guide to Monsters creature. I search in Grung, in Roll20, it pops up, stats, token, done. I can click a roll and it just does for me you know like that that has value to me like that saves my time um and like saving time for me is um it, it, it is valuable you know it's a tool in addition and, and again i know that roll 20 is not the same as dnd beyond i think that's that's something that people i uh, get hung up on a comparison about you know it's not worth it for me because it's not roll 20. Uh, i know that they're not trying to compete with that they're trying to uh, create different tools but when roll 20 exists and is already such a good product in my opinion for uh, exactly this stuff that they're trying to sell me you know i've already been sold it like that's the thing right i and i understand this is something that people have have said to me and and you know and i agree uh you know the product is not yet finished there will be later additions to the product and support for it sure um but we're talking about release day right and and as i as far as i know and i could be wrong the what we have seen so far are the features releasing with launch there may be more you know and and the prices may be subject to change but this is the information that i'm dealing with right now um and correct me if anyone knows anything else you know on launch day we're launching twitch integration and other stuff um i, I get a feature are coming but i can't buy something on the promise that features are coming you know uh, like, it's, it's early access, right? It's like buying something in early access, a game on Steam, for instance. And the amount of times, if you guys play games on Steam, I'm sure you have um, been, like, burned occasionally. You buy an early access game and you think, oh, this be worth it. Um, you know, there's going to be future support. And, like, two years later, you look at the thing, it's basically the same game that you had all along, and you've got all the enjoyment out of it anyway. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that's not the case with D&D Beyond, and I imagine it will continue to get better, and I know they're working on it. I think they've got a great team working on it as well, and this is, you know, no disrespect to the people who are working on us. I think the, the team at Curse are fantastic. I think they've been very communicative, and they've created a good product, you know, if this thing, if you just look at a thing well, without money involved. But money has to be involved, doesn't it? Because uh, it's, it's big, big bad Hasbro working on it. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not going anywhere. That's the thing. We can check it again in a year, and we do updates on it, I'm sure, uh, and we'll see what uh is the case then some people wouldn't mind uh depending on how long they intend on using this thing i suppose because eventually you'd end up losing money wouldn't mind like a three to five dollar tier in which you get the unlimited characters and you get the php content um you know i pay let's say let's call it five dollars making up numbers of course this is a good way to do it uh but like you know let's say i pay five dollars every month i get unlimited character slots and php content to me, that sounds reasonable. Um, I don't know about you guys. Is that, is that unreasonable? I mean, I mean, at this point, you may be so uninterested that you, <laughs> you don't want to buy it at all. But for me, that would be something that I would, as a player on my own, uh, I could find value in, even if I'm not playing with a group. Um, I think some of my problems is that you need to have other people that are invested into the platform to be able to get some real value out of it. You gotta wonder if there was a conversation somewhere along the road that, you know, they were pretty sure that everyone would buy this thing twice. You know, just on principle, whether or not, like, just on principle, um, uh, it doesn't, it's not about D&D, &D. it's not about, you know, it's just about purchasing the same thing twice from the same people. Um, it's just like, just don't do it, man, like, uh, what are you doing, you know, uh, if, if I need a car, I don't go buy and, uh, I don't go buy a car, and then when the same guy tries to sell me a car again, I'll have that one too, please, the exact same model. Bottom line is, buying the same thing twice is bullshit, and is pretty... Pretty detestable, I think, you know, just saying.
I'm not saying that I detest Wizard of the Coast, but I, 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 I do detest buying the same thing twice. Like, there is like a little sick feeling in your stomach when you buy the same thing twice, isn't it? You know, it's like, oh, this is, this is horrible. Oh, I don't want to do this. Uh, I guess, I guess, I guess I... I'll take my credit card then, you know, like, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. Is it worth it for me? Probably not. I would probably encourage you not to buy the same thing twice if you already bought it. If you don't have it already, a PHP, any kind of content, and you're like, I really want to play online. First of all, take a look at Roll20. Second of all, take a look at Fancy Grounds. See if you like any of those. Weigh up the pros and cons. And um, then look at beyond all the features that they have. See what you think is the most valuable to you. Do you want to use a virtual tabletop, etc.? Um, and depending on your watching this, see what features they have at the moment. Um, and I don't know if you're watching this on YouTube, you can fucking subscribe for more, I guess, or follow the channel if you're on Twitch right now. Uh, because, like I say, we'll be we'll be doing full reviews of every single fucking thing that they try and make us pay money for, and and buying it sadly, <laughs> buying it sadly.